Seven Days Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC, Lions Den, Boston community. For those who don't know, now you know. And in the building, back in the building, very special guest. I got my brother, the champ, Deontay the Browns, Bama Wilder. How you doing, champ? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? Doing wonderful, brother. Doing wonderful, man. And um, and of course, we have the brother Malik Scott in the building. How you doing, brother Malik? I'm doing good, man. Focus, ready to get this title back and on. Absolutely. Legacy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So this is the uh, first interview um, being done since winning the arbitration case. Can you take a, uh, take us through the process of the arbitration? Um, were you confident that you guys would win the arbitration? Uh, we was very confident. We was, uh, I mean, look, we just, we had all the facts. We had the proof along with it. And then, you know, being able to testify about the situation made it that much more better as well. Because one thing about it, when you know the truth and you're telling the truth, I mean, the truth is the truth. And they always say the truth to set you free. Now, when you have to tell the lie, one thing about that lie, you're going to be working for yourself because you're going to have to continue to keep that lie fresh, continue to remember what, what was said, what was done. And... You know, if it's a lie, then the truth shall come out, you know, and uh, that's that just what happened. And uh, we was basically as basic. I mean, anybody can understand this situation. We was contractual obligated to have a fight, period. I mean, he signed black to white paper. He contracted himself and, you know, he gave us his word, you know. So when you're doing that and you have we have we have the proof of that, then you gotta buy by the contract, no matter what going on or what you're trying to make happen. You know, you gotta handle the business and you can't close the chapter without going to Deontay Wilder. No doubt about it. And uh, how did you feel when uh you know the whole time you're thinking, okay, I got this trilogy coming up with Fury. And how did you feel when he came out and announced that he wasn't gonna fight you? He tried to get out of the situation, try to move on to fight Anthony Joshua. Uh, How did you feel about that? I mean, you know, of course I would look at it as a, 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 a coward way of trying to move, trying to avoid me, you know, for, for, for what purpose, for what reason? You know, we know the reasoning, he know the reasoning, but may, let it make sense to the, to the fans that's watching. Like, I just want to be in a sport where I say I'm the best, they say they the best, and the best want to fight the best no matter what. Not turn the best, go around and try to fight we opposition for higher money. That's robbing the fans, that's robbing the people. I don't want to rob the people. I want to give you the best fighting the best at their very best, at that peak of the time. You know, everybody always worried about money, money, this, money, or that. But if you man, if you know how to you know how to manage your money outside of your occupation and, and be able to differentiate between your wants and needs and do the right thing you money you'll see money you know they it gonna come and go regardless but money is not everything money right. don't have to be the 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 the, the, the be, be all in all of everything that we have to do well we gotta do some money you gotta get paid got this no bro i'm all about building my legacy saying that i am the best and knowing that i'm the best and putting it and putting that up to test it anybody that feel like they better and giving the fans what they want to see. We lose a draw. And that's what I'm in this sport for. And that's what I need other opponents to feel the same way. It's too much of that. Uh, uh, all these guys avoiding each other. Then you got all these guys with this white privilege out here that have the media making them sound like they're bigger and better than everybody else, which they're not. You know, they try to push and move the narrative. And it always happens to black fighters. It's crazy how, you know, it is going on, especially with me, but you know, I have so much positivity around me and so much love around me, man. With this whole situation of arbitration uh, and all that, man, I just been training. That's all we've been doing, training, focus, focusing, and uh, just, you know, getting love from the family and stuff. I didn't really worry about it too much because I already knew we had the proof, we had all the evidence, and we had a, a, a damn good lawyer. So um, that's all that would matter in at the time. And uh, one thing about my team that you don't see with a, a lot of these, these, these guys that have been out here running their mouth is that my team is together. 
we're all together. We're always on one page, on one accord. And that's 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 power. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Uh let me ask brother uh, Malik. Uh brother Malik, how did you uh how did you join the team? I know you and, uh, and Champ have always been cool, but how did you join the team and come on as a trainer? Uh, well, I've been on the team because Deontay have always been like family to me for the last 12 to 15 years, whatever it's been. And um, being to the fact I'm a student of the game and boxing is all I've ever done my whole life since the, since the age of 12. We always had a mutual respect for each other when it comes to the boxing thing, even outside, even outside of the ring. As far as advice, I mean, what's the best thing for him to do? What's the best thing I, for, for me to do in my career? Even when we fought, you know, those is probably, I, when we fought was probably the only two or three months we haven't talked too much that we didn't talk through our whole relationship. So when the thing happened uh, uh, with the Fury fight and we came up short for, we all know, so many reasons, uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a question of doubt. Literally, we had a, a very emo emotional time with each other, emotional moment after the fight, obviously. You know, my brother took a loss. I, I've never seen him or nobody I'm extremely close to in that position like that. And it was his first time, so, you know, uh, doing with, dealing with that. And, um, you know, when we decided that I was coming on board, it would, you know, I was insulted that he asked me, honestly, because it, I wouldn't say no to it regardless. You know what I mean? He's my family. And I know he trusts me, so it wasn't even. I, even though I've been given this position as his head coach, I, it's still the same way it's always been. It's just more hands on now, and the more hands on I am with him, the better it is for me and him. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, ever since this fight, Deontay has been training. Three training camps he's went through, and and a couple of them wasn't at home. He switched locations, went to training camp. The court thing fell through. Switch locations again with the training and court thing fell through. But one thing I can say about him is his mentality. Throughout all of this was going, not one time did he show doubt as far as what was going on in that courtroom. He told me the date. He told me what the what the um, the result was going to be. And now we're here now. We, we're here with a date. I mean, Deontay Wilder is not just one of the best, if not the best heavyweight in the world because of what he do in the ring. It's, he's such a worry outside the ring as well. It took a worry to go through all of that shit he just went through in that courtroom. Right. The date's falling through. Uh, 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 the games that they're playing on that other side. Him being quiet the whole time. He said nothing. Any quotes or anything that, that people have put out about him, it literally came from you. You're the only one he really messed with or trust when it comes to this media thing. You know what I'm trying to say? So me being right. on board now is a thing that has always been going on. And listen to me when I tell you this. I have no doubt, even after the fight that we came up short, I have no doubt that he's going to be two-time heavyweight champion of the world. I've never seen him in this zone before besides one camp, and I brag about this camp all the time, is when we was about to fight Pavekin. The zone he was in with, in Pavekin was an invincible zone. The zone he's in now is way beyond that. And the energy that he's given me is even putting me there. I'm not going to say it's going to have me there. It has me there. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. So he's been quiet this whole time, and I believe everything that he's been through since that loss is going to pay off in July. And I'm looking forward to it. I have no doubt he's going to be two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And I believe all of this was ordained for the better. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Champ, let me ask you. It's been rumors. As soon as a video <laughs> surfaced that you and Brother Malik were training together, looking sharp, and uh, rumors came out that uh, you had cut uh, or fire JDs. Can you respond to that, Roman? Well, I'm sure if anyone has been keeping up with me, you know, on my social media platform, um, the different reports, you know, the new media, you know, shout out to new media. Y'all doing a hell of a job, man. You know who mess with, you know. Um, they do a great uh, job of reporting what's the real is, you know what I mean? And uh, a lot of people, I'm sure they've seen JDs in the, the different clips um, that Malik is always posting. You know, I post a couple of training clips as well of demonstrating certain things and strategies that we're doing. And, um, and I'm sure they've seen JDs in the background still, you know, doing this thing. You know, you can hear his voice in certain clips as well. So, you know, JDs is still on the team. And and it's it's been a lot of false false allegations about me, false statements and stuff like that, you know, which 
you know, if you if if, if you gonna be the one that listen in and uh, you want to listen to some negative stuff, you know, then be my guest. I know some people don't know what's going on, but if you don't hear it from me, then it ain't happen. I just I'm letting you know right now, you don't hear it from me, it didn't happen. You know, and uh, I got my full team, and I'm I'm happy with what I have. And uh, it's been a great camp, man. These, like Malik said, this is our third one. We're going, going into another one real soon. And that's what it all been about. Train, train, focusing, getting back to me, you know. And uh, it's going to be crazy. Sure. Y'all don't want to miss this one. My mindset is just so different. Even right now, man, I don't even feel like I'm here, you know. But my mentality is how you've been contemplating about hurting a person so bad, like to the point you want to disfigure him with his mother, wouldn't even know who he was if she passed by him. You know, and when you've been having your mind set on this one person and how you wanted to decapitate him in every fucking way possible, it's like it that premeditated stuff. And when I do see him, I'm gonna love to see what I feel, what I'm thinking, how my 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 senses change when he's in my environment because I've been contemplating, I've been sitting back premeditating on whooping this man to <laughs> on this very night. So now that is it's now we have a date as well. Like training has been even more intense because. Those other camps, although it was intense, but we had no guidance. We didn't have an ETA. We didn't know what we, what we was going. We just know that we wanted to stay in shape throughout this whole process because <clears throat> victory was going to be mine, said the Lord. And uh, it came that way. And so now that we have an ETA, now we have a, a location that we're, 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 we're about to go, it makes training even more intense, anticipated, you know, because it means something now. Now it's in the books. It's, it's for certain now. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You got to go through me. The harder punches in the heavyweight division, probably in, in history. And yeah. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue with that reign of doing that, you know. They can't take my pride, man. They can't buck with me. They can't, you know, they can't discourage me on what I'm trying to do or or, you know, I still I still had a strong mind. You know, I've been prepared ever since I was a young boy. I've been prepared for this situation, going through the the the, the ring of fire and everything that I do. So when people not about greatness, I show people uh, sensitive sides of me. I show people kind sides of me. You know, if you need if 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 they say you only had three minutes, I give you thirteen minutes. And all of all all the reporters and media know that. You know what I mean? That was just my personality. But now, <laughs> I'm different me. And I absolutely needed it, you know? They put hatred in my heart. And now I'm seeking revenge. They say, the Lord said revenge is here. But I tell you, God, let me be right beside you on this one. Because I want to feel every bit of it. I want to feel everything we're going to go through, whether dealing with training, whether dealing with the conversation, or, or the other emotional garbage that's thrown at me each and every day. And I love it. Many people said that I was depressed. Some of them had my personal number. They could have called and asked that if they really cared and if they really thought that. You know, when someone you care for, you're going to call and, bro, what's wrong? What's going on? Are you this? You know? Before, especially if you in a position where you have a pen to paper and you have to write and others are gonna read what you're writing. Now you gotta be careful unless you're trying to bait people, you want you trying to get more light than now you trying to you you trying to be first than to be correct. A lot of people wanna be first than being correct. Right. And him coming out, you know, people coming out with bogus stuff about me and without being correct, you know, it's it's crazy. But I need all of it. I appreciate it all. Because this is a new me, you know. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, champ. And um, let me ask you, uh, what do you think of uh, the the 
But once the arbitration came back and it was ruled in your favor, um, it seems to me as though uh, Bob Aram and Tyson Fury already knew what was going to happen because they immediately just, hey, let's go from the fight Deontay Wilder in the trilogy. No questions asked. Boom, boom, boom. You know, they, they just, they was ready to go. And um, <laughs> uh, your old friend Eddie mm -hmm. Hearn would seem to be upset about that. You know, he thought he had something going with the with the AJ Fury fight. Uh, he had, he thought he had a, a, he had something locked and loaded for that fight. You know what I mean? But, um, well, let's, well, you know what? We ain't even gonna do that. Let's, we're gonna focus on Fury. We ain't gonna worry about the other stuff. We focus on Fury because that's the that's the yeah. that's that's the main one who who needs his ass with right about now. You know what I'm saying? That's the one we need his ass with. <laughs> but but what has what is your primary focus right now going into this trilogy? What is your your primary focus right now for you and Malik? Um, not only just for me, you know, Malik. I think I can speak for the whole team. This right here is retaliation. We want it back in blood, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that's it. We want back in blood. That's what they tried to do in front of the world. And with his white privilege, he was able to 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 surpass a lot of different things. You know, many people, especially in boxing, they did this, they did this, would allow them to do this. Right. I see no evil. I hear none, so I shall speak none. Right. When they know, no matter what has been said, you know about me or anyone else that knows facts to be true no matter what you want your mind to you sit here and try to wrap around and not believe one thing for sure when you see certain things your eyes should know the truth how you feel you can close your eyes and not see the truth but you can feel the truth <laughs> mm -hmm. But when you see those gloves and stuff flapping and going to a 90 degree a angle or keeping a smushed in form, you know, that's obvious right there to let you know what the hell is going on. But like I said, everybody did this right here, which is okay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. Oh my God. <laughs> Y'all made me so much better i'm gonna be you see that. i'm gonna be i'm gonna be nice about y'all made me better but you didn't make me better you made me better with all the things that were said and the false allegations just doing a guy like me in the, and putting me in a situation as an american and when we have americans American cared so much about British 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 fighters and all what they got going on and trying to unify a title that ain't even gonna be on their soil, you know what I mean? But when right. it did with me, you know, I only had to like really go into farther because everybody have seen it. Mm -hmm. But you made me better, but when I say you didn't make me better, it's like I already had all these things. A lot of things that, you know, you see some people already have certain attributes, already have certain things within inside of them. And it takes a certain situation to, 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 to like push that button or, or flip that switch to, for them to bring out what they already have had. Right. What we already knew the character was. You know, Say again, brother Malik. It's like certain situations invalidate who who an individual who an individual is. So it's like you can meet someone or you could be around someone, and you could tell by their moves on the kind of person that they are. But it is, but certain situations happen, and it's like I knew you was like that. But now I really know you was like that. Exactly. You get what I'm trying to say? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in this situation right here, uh, uh, like Bates say, we don't got no grass. We got all dirt now. But whatever grass that we did have at one time is cut now. So yeah. if all the snakes were seen, and all the snakes was captured and thrown away. You know what I mean? So I, I, I personally, I love where Deontay mind frame is at more than ever. I love the way he's training. 
I love how receptive he is. I love how we can go back and forth on strategy. Our communication is very well. Our chemistry is incredible. Like, you know what I mean? With me training him. It's a, you know, he's two-time heavyweight champion of the world, man. And if I was on the outside looking in and I had no relation to him at all, I would still have this same opinion because the way how he moves, especially th this since that fight and just the silence that was going on that whole time, he was silent, worldly, but was fighting hard in the courtroom the whole time. So really, he didn't even have a break away from fighting. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I looked at it like after the after the loss, in my opinion, the game tried to bury him alive. Right. You know what I mean? I watched this man make U-turns in the middle of crowded avenues to get people to go pick up babies, to, to give people 20, 30-minute interviews, to talk to people, kids. I didn't, I, I didn't have words with him, not argumentative words, but he had to check me sometimes and let me know. No, bro, let them 20 more people win. I'm, bro, you just did 300 people. No, I need them 20 more people win to come. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. So it's almost like, I, I, you know, I just believe everything that happened is a testimony to his strength and character. And, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm already proud of him because I know what he get ready to do come July. Yes, sir. And I noticed, man, um, and I tell people, anybody who listen to me, when people kept all those reports coming out, oh, I heard the Wilder's depressed, I heard this now. I was like, man, I didn't hear none of this. I talked to Champ. I never stopped talking mm -hmm. to Champ. And, and, and he, Champ has been focused. He never, he's always said he won't. That trilogy, he never said he didn't want the fight. He never said he wanted to take some step aside money. Nothing. He always was talking and about. Champ has been building. And when I say building, I mean literally. He has been building acres on top of acres on top of acres and some more shit. If they saying he was depressed, I I, I, I hope I get that depressed on that. I'm looking forward to being depressed as Deontay Wilder. If they call him <laughs> depressed, that's the kind of depressed I'm like. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I'm telling you, man, <laughs> if, if the, way, if the way this game is set up, once a narrative is out, it could be anything, especially with Deontay. I told him the other day, because even myself, it, it was at one time, I would hear so much shit, in, and I would be like, and people would say, it's like he, he got a, a, his own coat of people that just talk bad about it. I'm like, yeah. no, nah, that's just come with the game. But recently, in the last couple months, I'm like, no, 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 no. This shit is a real thing. No matter what he do, mm -hmm. it's something bad to say about him. When, when, when they didn't know what he was doing, they say, oh, he's depressed. When they see he's training and looking incredible and seeing what his intention is, they worried about the living room that he's training in or the backyard that he's training in. No one is saying that he's training on every fucking piece of acre of land that he worked hard for. You know what I'm saying? And this right. is the reason that I don't listen to human beings. This is the reason that I'm my own man. This is the reason why I do what makes me happy. Because listening to humans and the narratives that they're willing to believe and the narratives that they're willing to, to just put out with no facts, it's just incredible, man. You know what I mean? But he's training hard. His mindset is somewhere I've never seen it before. And I've been, like I said, I've been around for the last 15 years. And I've been in the ring with him. And I've been on the outside of the ring with him. And I've been – you know, so where he's at right now is the perfect place for the job that he has to get done. His mindset is in that place and beyond. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Most and, uh, and, you know, seven, eight, seven, eight to, to, to really just to, uh, to, uh, to reflect on, you know, me and Malik getting together and stuff like that. Like, like I told Malik, and you know, he already know and stuff like, I like, bro, like I've been wanting to like bring you apart. You know, ever since I first met the man's back in Poconos, I met him, um, at the, uh, um, uh, adamant camp with, with uh as his trainer roger uh bloodworth it was an amazing camp and that's what i made it was just me and malik and uh and we we bonded like instantly you know um i'm an energy person and a lot of people that know me know how i am like i'm energy connected and when i connect with people it's like we become family and and when you say you love someone you hear them, but you also can feel it. You know what I mean? And them the people that you will want to be around and be connected with. And not even knowing this man is always all it just felt like I knew this man. I even cooked for this man. You know. Right. His family came over. I cooked for his family. <laughs> his kids, right. you know what I mean? Just not even knowing him like that, but the connection and the feeling that we had together is like 
This is my brother from another mother. I know this man from somewhere. Like it's seventy-eight. Seventy. It's it's it's. I I I I know you. You may not be as familiar with how training camps go, right? Yeah. When somebody is fighting at that time, a Klitschko brother. Those kind of camps are crowded camps. A guy fighting a Vitaly or Vladimir may have at least six or seven guys in an right. eye. This particular camp, these me and Deontay didn't know each other nothing. I was there on Monday, he got there on Tuesday, and we was the only two fighters on the whole compound, the whole camp with each other. So our our our, our journey to I always say was ordained for us to be together the way how we are. You know what I mean? Of course, you know, we fought each other and everybody know what happened with that fight, opinions is opinions. We sparred each other. Just everything. Right. All in all, the mission that we on in our journey or how things have ended up now, it just all was ordained. And this is just meant to be. Right, right, absolutely. Absolutely. Um I think that um what well, what other first of all I want to say this the, the training footage that we've seen, the mitts and stuff like that, the movement, champ looking real, real crisp, real crisp, man, real sharp right now. You know what I mean? Looking, uh, um, you know, you can tell champ been training too. They thought you was sitting around doing nothing, all depressed, and you know, <laughs> you know, they thought they thought man, they're gonna be sadly mistaken, you know, come come next uh July or in July. I'll be sadly mistaken. Oh, you know what I mean? But oh, um, it's but, gonna be crazy, it's gonna be a crazy fight. It's gonna be uh definitely a different fight. Um than, than the first and the second fight, you know. It's, it's going to be totally different. Even the feeling, even that I have right now, I'm in hell of shape right now. And we ain't even started camp. Like, this, this upcoming camp, we haven't even started yet. And I've already broken the soreness, um, um, the soreness uh, that, that's going to go through my body from training and stuff. Like, you know, sometimes, when, like, when you get in, uh, you want to, when you finna get ready to get in camp, you want to get in shape before sparring partners come or anything like that. So you already want to go through the process of getting the soreness out the way and at least somewhat starting it. So that that way, when you get into camp and you get in the middle of camp, you should be feeling way better than you felt in the first starting camp. And then close coming to the end of camp, you should be feeling great because all that process of the soreness and if you have done the right things with your body and stuff like that, you know, treating it right and doing all the proper things necessary need to get you feeling great, getting the proper sleep and um, putting the proper things in your body, getting back up, you feeling like a young man each and every day, starting all over again. Right. And that's just what we've been doing. We've just been training, getting everything together. Like I said, I wanted to leave a long time ago. You know, but I and those that know me know that I'm a loyal person, and if I'm with you, I'm with you to the I'm with you until right. to to otherwise. You know what I mean? And uh, but I had so many other trainers on the team. It's like the only way to bring them on uh, is to have to get rid of somebody because you can't have too many. You know what I mean? It, you know. So when the opportunity came about, it was like a no brainer. I knew exactly right. who I wanted to come in. I knew exactly um, who was going to be the guy, the perfect guy for the job. And having all. Oh, you just, you just uh, went out. Your mic went out. Oh, champ. It might have been. Can, can you hear him now? Yeah, I can hear you. Let me, okay, um, good. You might have got a phone call. Yeah, I'm going to put my phone on. on um, don't disturb. Okay. All right, brother uh uh Malik man so what y'all what I mean um uh I don't know if you, you can't I know you want can't go over strategy and stuff like that but um uh, um how has champ been looking to you um as opposed to other camps right now is he looking sharper is he looking faster stronger more focused what would you say my opinion and this from the I'm saying this from the very first session since everyone been seeing it it's just very surgical. Everything is being done with a purpose. We all know he got the missile, but the places he putting the missile at now and how he's setting it up and the mentality, because it's lit. I look at boxing like this. Boxing doesn't run parallel. Boxing runs like this, in my opinion. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. 
De Deontay is in a place now like, okay, because we know what Fury is. You get what I'm trying to say? That's what make Deontay, in my opinion, a whole lot more dangerous. Where he's at now is that setting him up. You get what I'm trying to say? And, 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 and not just with one, not just with two. Not just, this is all the things I've been watching him do for 13, 14 years in different training camps. So right. to, to bounce back off of what Deontay was saying, you tell me one champion that ever had someone in their camp, regardless of what style they was fighting, you could, they always had this one person all the time in their camp. I don't fight like fucking Arthur Spilka. I right. don't have a style like Bermain Severn. You get them? I'm not as tall as Calvin Price's. Like it's so many guys he fought, but I always was there. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. And that comes from not just from boxing, the chemistry, the loyalty, how he is. Right. He's looking very surgical. The mindset is very violent right now. And when I look at the comparison on between the first fight, because I'm a, a film study freak, I literally look at Fury One, Fury Two, twelve times per weekend. And that's just two days. Now, I can't what I do the rest of the other five days as far as my film study. And it's just a totally different Deontay right now, man. And I think it comes from the mentality first. He knows what's, what kind of situation we're in, and he knows what has to be done. And he's treating the situation accordingly. And that's what I'm impressed with the most. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like I said, we built a facility to do a licensed homicide. And Deontay Wilder is not playing. Listen to what I'm saying. He's built a facility to get this job done. When he wake up and roll out of the bed, it's right to work. When right. he rolled and drive down to the gym, it's right to work. You get what I'm trying to say? Everything we're doing, he's right to work. I've never seen it before from him like this at this level. Mm -hmm. He's treating the situation accordingly. And um, like I said, I'm proud of him already for what we're about to get done in July. Yes, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, champ, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Can you see me? Oh no, we can't see you right now. Um, you might have well, to. Uh, you might have to uh, leave out and come back in. Sometimes so they do that when you get a phone leave call. And just come back. Yep, just leave out and come right back in. Same link. Yeah, but um, yeah, they um, yeah, it, 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 Champ definitely looks. He looks sharp, man. He looks real sharp on the mix. He's getting a lot of a lot of people complimenting him and uh, talking about it. stuff for that. He know the haters gonna hate anyway. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what he do, but. Uh, Real boxing heads so looking at this and excited about the possibilities and stuff like that. What's going on? You know what I mean? And uh, uh, there you go, champ, back in there. And we got um, to, and we, and, and, and both, everything we've been doing been pre camping. Right. Yeah, this is yeah, always for sure. We're, we haven't even gotten like, it's going to be a mad thing come July. It's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. a mad thing. And he's yeah. fully healed. All of those oh, title defenses, all of those title defenses, I'm not saying this because nothing else. When he won the title, he was injured. The night before injury, we had to bring an eye doctor in because he almost couldn't fight because something went into his eye, up in his eyelid or something. I can see number gray. Out of his eye. Right. The man hasn't had a healthy body basically his whole career. He's 100% right. healthy now. A1 doctors on board have got certain jobs and certain injuries he's been dealing with. All that is over now. His mind state is kill, kill, kill with the surgical blueprints behind it now. The grass is cut. We know who is who. He's training like ever, never before. How can we miss? How? We're not fighting somebody that he didn't knock out before or never knocked down. Right. Like, we're not, like this is not someone we're not familiar with. He watched, he stood over Fury and watched that man eyes roll in the back of his head. My brother wasn't even at 70, 50% that last fight. And you a big, you weigh 260, 70 or something pounds, and you can't get this skinny leg, skinny non-boxing, uh, every other name they call him out of here? Why is Deontay Wilder finishing on his feet with right. a in and head thing, with bloody nose and still looking at you like you're going to have to kill me? Why isn't he laid out? Because I could tell you one thing, if he if Fury was in that position that Deontay was in on that night, it would have been a bad thing. He would not have lasted that long. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Mercy. So, it would have been a, 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 a massacre. It would have been a massacre if them rules was reversed. Oh, my goodness. The way I felt when Chris took that helmet off of me, like, I, I, I it was an unbelievable feeling. Like, I felt like so drained. I felt so weak. 
legs were so weak. I was like, what the fuck? But my my warrior mentality, it wouldn't allow me not to proceed. My 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 king mentality, my responsibility as a black man, uh, first and foremost, as a leader, to show people hope. See, people are afraid of my success because I am hope. I am pride. You know, I am milestones for for others to, to be able to reach. I am I am love. I am, you know, peace, bro. And and the condition that I was that I was under that night, boy, that shit was crazy. I could have went back to my corner and said, Coach, I don't feel right. I, I, I don't wanna I don't feel right. I knew exactly right. what I would get myself into, seven eight. Right. But I liked it, the feeling of being able to see what ah Deontay Wilder, who I feel is the best, the greatest heavyweight champion there was. I still got a long way to go. Right. But I'm here though. That's the thing about it. My career ain't over with. I ain't done. It ain't like I can't continue or proceed because I am right. here. <laughs> yes, indeed. And yes. Oh, man, I love where I am. Again, my mindset. It's right now it's just different right now and I think if you've been a fighter before or had to train for any comeback and you know how the mind can change especially when you're dealing with combat then you know where my state of mind is at this moment in time and you got to keep in mind it's been for a year, about a year or so so yes sir Oh, wait, wait, Brother Malik is on mute. Hold on one second. Uh, there you go. Here you go, Brother Malik. You got some some uh, journalists out here. I read and I see certain interviews, and they say, well, he hasn't been in the ring since. He lost to Fury. How is he going to do it? And I'm like, well, Fury hasn't been in the ring since he fought Deontay. Right. Not like Fury's been busy and Deontay haven't. Lost that fight, no exaggeration at all. We'll say... Deontay got out the ring at, we'll say, 12.45. With all that shit was going on, doctors, just everything that going to fill in that mode, 12.45, we out the ring by 3 a.m. We was already putting a play together for what's going on now. Right. That's how much. He, I don't know. He's a different kind of dude, man, Deontay. You know, he's so fucking stubborn, and it makes him, in my opinion, one of the greatest of all time. You get what I'm trying to say? Right, right. He got the ring out of that kind of battle at 12.45. At 3 a.m., you already on the phone with me. We we making the plays for what's happening now. Never was in a rut. Of course, you know, took the L. Feel that. Never was in a, that's what, never was depressed. You're very fortunate you can be at this level of depression. They call this depression, like I said earlier. You right. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. One thing I like, like about your station, bro, you don't play the game. You into what's right, not who's right. You get Absolutely. what I'm trying to say? Right is right, wrong is wrong. You get what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Um, uh, Salute to the general. To the general. And the, hell, and the mighty L. DBC. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, baby. <laughs> no doubt about it. Man. It's going to be real good. I, I, I just can't wait. I can't wait, man. I really can't because I know what's getting ready to happen. Because it, it we the first step has already happened. They didn't think we was going to do it in the courtroom. That happened. He threw a monkey wrench in top and inside the whole everyone's plans. You know, Fury and Joshua's fighting with each other like little cats and dogs now. Deontay is still back, training, working hard. We see everybody in the little hotel mansions wearing Versace. Deontay actually owned penthouses like that. He's not in someone else's other penthouse with his Versace robes on. Why they doing all that partying, all that flying here, flying there? He's in the lab. Right. Why they doing all that partying? He's doing cryo. While they doing all that partying, I'm doing film study. While they doing all that partying, we strategizing. While they was doing all that talking, he was quiet the whole time. He was building for what's about to happen right now. It's all ordained. It's all ordained. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, you know what? what, what so uh, I don't know how much you want to reveal, but what what y'all got cooking, man? Is it is it another piece to the puzzle, man? Coming through, champ. It's crazy that you that you that you say that. Um, 
we actually do got another piece to the puzzle coming. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know um so when, when he when he arrives it's, uh, it's, it's gonna be great to uh to get a a feel of him an energy feel a chemistry a chemistry feel and you know and just the vibe and and and, and uh relief uh release information within each other and see how it go i think you know just from afar or uh, knowing him how i know him you know, he seemed like a great guy. I've heard nothing but great things about him. You know, amazing things, actually. You know, and uh, I think it's going to be a great pair. I think I got a great establishment, a great team that that, that I have had prepared before me. And uh, hopefully this team that I've established, we should, how we start with, we all finish together, you know. That's how I have for my original team. That that's why I'm so loyal. You know, I'm a loyal person. You know, we don't have too many trainers that 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 brought a fighter up and they're still with that same trainer as they start, especially at, especially uh, after becoming a champion or even sometime before becoming a champion. I'm right. still I was still with the same people, same people because of my loyalty. Like I said, I wanted to bring bring I wanted to bring Malik in a long time time ago but you know i was loyal to the people that i had and so i couldn't so bro bro always been with me you know like you said he always been in every fucking camp that i had so our chemistry chemistry has from day one was done and it has grown over the years into now like it's just crazy it, it's it's like we some we can go we can go years without even talking to each other but that one crack of voice that one communi crack of communication, that one crack of sight of seeing each other. It's like, man, I just, I, it felt like I seen you yesterday or talked to you yesterday or, you know, man, the magic of this, this wonderful world that we live in and, 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 and the power that we possess as human beings, it's amazing, you know, and the chemistry that we have, you know, that's what you want as a, uh, a fighter and a trainer. You know, many fighters and trainers, they go years, they go a lifetime trying to build a chemistry together that we already had at, at first sight. Love at first sight. Absolutely. That's my brother. I love my brothers. And when we say we love each other, what's understood, come on with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Man, I wanna I wanna say first and foremost, man, thank you so much, man, for for not letting these people uh uh you know break your spirit, man, and can, remaining strong and remaining uh of that positive figure for, for the black community that you are. I don't give a fuck what nobody else say. You know who you are, you know what I mean? And, and you didn't let them people break you. They tried, but they tried yeah, everything. They did. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about they tried physically, mentally, everything they could do. And you're still here, man. And I wanna thank you, brother, for still remaining to be you. You know what I mean? My and um, yes, indeed, man. And um, I want to thank you, brother Malik Scott, for your time as well, brother. Uh, uh, M brother Malik, tell the people where they can find you. You on social media, anything? Yeah, uh, Malik King Scott on everything. M A L I K K I N G S C O T T. So, I need, let me give you one more thing, brother, before we get off the phone. Uh huh. Uh, I'm a, I'm a diehard boxing, in my opinion, fan, journalist, whatever. I, I I would guarantee you, I know more about this sport than most journalists because it's, it's all I've ever really. done. Yeah. Muhammad Ali is one of my greatest fighters of all time more. He, he was very magical in the ring, but it was the things that he beat outside the ring, which really got my attention and why I give him nothing but gratitude for which. Yes. Deontay Wilder is the closest thing to that in this time. Absolutely. The way that he just fought. For the, he, he, listen what, what happened, stuff like this. And I heard you speak on this a while ago. We'll save the Ortiz thing because Ortiz get played down like he's really not a threat. Oh, man. Right. And they only did that after Deontay did what he oh, did. Oh, man. He's taking other people's responsibilities on because Ortiz was somebody else's responsibility. We know right. who that was, right? <laughs> right. He took that responsibility. <laughs> when it wasn't a mandatory, Ortiz get caught in the scandal. He said, forget all of that. He got a daughter. I see what he's going through with his daughter. I'm give, I still want to give him an opportunity. Give him an opportunity. Beats him. 
brought him back again, give him another opportunity. This is not about boxing right here. We're talking about character. Oh, man. Come on. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. This thing Come that on, just man. happened in this courtroom, I only can remember one thing that's close to it, and it's the Lennox Lewis Rockman rematch thing. But in that case, that was two brothers basically going at it. Right. What they tried to do in this case was really bury Deontay a lot, and he fought the whole time outside of the ring. This should not just touch boxers. This should touch all athletes. Just because you leave your craft off the field or out the ring or off the court, you still have battles to fight outside the ring. You're not even fighting for yourself. You're doing that for others, and you're paving the way. That's what this arbitration victory should have should be looked at. This is not right. yeah, he won in court. They got to fight. No, 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 no. Hold on. This is not. I don't, people gonna take this the wrong way. And guess who don't give a fuck? It's almost like <laughs> it, it's, it's it's in the resemblance of like when uh, Ali said, "I'm not going to the army." Right. Of course, it's not about the army. Mm -hmm. I'm not going and stood with that. Oh y'all, I'm not. No, that fight is not happening. I want my trilogy. Right. I want my trilogy. Oh, you're not going to give it to me? I'm going to fight for my trilogy. We got to go to court for how long? People don't even have the gas. Gas is finances in court. People don't even have the gas to go that long in court. I bet they wouldn't fight that long because you ain't got the ammo. He got the ammo and used it for the right reasons to get his title back to lead his people again. How this go blind for some people? They just believe what they want to believe, bro. You get what I'm trying to say? This is the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Come July 23rd, 24th, whenever it is. And I bet my life on it. This is the most important job of my life. And I'm not saying this as a journey was just some training. I've had my own career as a child, as an adult. We all know that. This is the most important job of my life. This is the most passionate job of my life I've ever been this passionate about. I've never had a job I believe in more than this one. I know where his head is at. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Absolutely, man. Uh, there you go, man. Crazy. <laughs> crazy, They're gonna be crazy. Oh yes, my goodness. Oh my man. goodness. They man, stuff. Train and, you know, now. Let's go get the pads just, down. You know, oh, man, let's go. God damn, what about Super Bowl? Get the gym, man. God damn, and the battle rope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Chad. Yeah, you got. But you know. Um, to 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 you know one more thing to 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 elaborate what Malik was saying you know this message right here I do want fighters you know other uh, um, athletes but you know specifically fighters to to educate themselves on this situation to understand your position understand what side you on. You know, to understand that when I say I bet it on myself, I bet it on myself. Sure. With that being said, I'm able to have the power to have the right people around me. I'm able to have the power to have the funds to get the right attorneys for me because it was really four against one. They didn't expect this black man to come out on top like he did. That's why you seen Hearns and Josh with them trying to and Fury them trying to promote a fight, that was never gonna happen in the first place. Both parties understood and knew what was going on. No matter who's trying to cap for who and put this narrative out like that, all parties knew. And you hear that from me, all parties knew. Right. And it just don't make no sense to go ahead when you know you ain't got something already in the bag. That's so dangerous and that's so unprofessional and that is very stupid to do. Thirsty. They, they promoted a maybe, and people bought that shit. Once again, an example of how humans protection for the complexion. It's just crazy, man. Mm -hmm. It was the complexion for the protection. You know how that go. Mm -hmm. I wish I could feel some of that shit sometime. But right. on the other hand, I love that what I go through because it allowed me to know the importance that I am in this world. Because if I wasn't important, they would have nothing to say about me. Look, all these guys, all these drugs, and and different things like that, and when it come out that they've done something, you know, the world don't don't do them nowhere near it like they try to do me. Right. But if they understood that I'm a man of peace, I'm a man of happiness, it's surrounded by me no matter what situation. And I got thick skin, I'm tough. I'm a king. And when my grandmama told me I was doing it, I would have to prepare myself 
for a table that was prepared before me. And now I sit at the end of it as a true leader. And when I get in that ring, people know I'm going off of my shit. You don't have to kill me. And don't worry about my family, please, because they're straight. Trust me. They're beautifully made because daddy make the decisions that he need. I can understand and differentiate between my wants and my needs as a young man. So when I became a man, those same principles and valuable morals and goals that I have of myself still apply. And when I say things, I practice what I preach. America has a true warrior, a true king in Deontay Wilder. And now the second half, the second phase, two time heavyweight champion of the world. It's going to be beautiful. But I am apologizing for the change because y'all did it. <laughs> yes, Here we go, baby. I can't wait. <laughs> yes, sir, champ, man. And I want to thank you so much for your time, champ. And, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, definitely going to be talking to you again before the fight. Uh, uh, thank you, brother Malik. Absolutely, man. Yeah, man. Your brother, stay blessed, man. And Stay focused. I know you will. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yes, indeed. 78 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty. Hell, DBC. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we up out of here. All right, baby. Bam Bam squad!